I'm going to speak for yourself, presented by Hyundai. Speak of a new contract. My man, Emmanuel Otto's in the building. Oh, um, Marcellus Wally, what a weekend, big dog. Oh, Ooh. what a weekend. Football? Football. And brooches. Look at and that brooches. brooch. Football and brooches. It's a great combination. Well, you look like royalty over there. You got his own money, y'all. Well, we're here for the next two hours, so let's start where the money's going. Dallas, where the Cowboys have one of their best comeback wins you'll ever see. Dallas was down by 20 in the first quarter and 15 in the fourth, but Dak Prescott led them back with two touchdowns. You hear that, Acho, with under five minutes left to cut Atlanta's lead to two. Then the Cowboys recovered the onside kick while the Falcons just watched. A couple plays later, Dak hit C.D. Lamb for a 24-yard pass that helped set up the game-winning field goal. So, Acho, been waiting for this moment. Did Dak earn a contract from the Cowboys in the win over the Falcons yesterday? Dak Prescott played a great game, Marcellus. I don't like when you push away. That's bad body language. Game. What you mean? No. Except this. He didn't. He didn't earn a contract yesterday. Uh, but he didn't earn a contract yesterday, not because he didn't play well. Y'all bear with me. This isn't a hot take. He didn't mm. earn a contract yesterday because Dak Prescott didn't do anything that we haven't seen before. But uh, we, I'm going to start the show with this because when I'm in the dressing room getting ready for this show, I tune into the herd. And every now and then, uh, Colin says something that I can't twist into my own words. I just have to say it the way he said it. Yeah. Colin said, he said about an hour ago, yes, this is plagiarism, <laughs> but I'm citing my sources, MLA format. Okay. Um, Collins, he said this, he said, if my kid runs into the street but doesn't get hit by a car, uh. I'm not going to praise him for not getting hit by a car. Oh, I'm going, still yeah. going to be like, bro, you ran into the street. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to praise the Dallas Cowboys <sighs> for winning a game that uh. they really shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. Oh. Now, what I will say is this. Oh. Dak Prescott, 400 yards passing, phenomenal job. Grit, determination, leadership, excelling, even in spite of terrible coaching. I'm going to get to that later. <laughs> but, but Dak Prescott, Marcellus, since 2016, he has the most game-winning drives. Okay. We knew Dak Prescott can have a game-winning drive. Dak Prescott, top five passer last year in the National Football League. I know Dak Prescott can pass for a lot of yards, but... I have to ask myself, Marcellus, why are the Cowboys always playing from behind? Oh, really? Always is the always, word? That's the choice word? If you, were, if you, you were have the most game-winning drives, there's a reason. Yeah. Remember, last week, the Seattle Seahawks mm. played the same Atlanta Falcons team. Mm. They didn't play with their food. This week, the Dallas Cowboys, they needed the Atlanta Falcons to do something no NFL team in the Super Bowl era has done. Score 39 points with no turnovers and lose. <laughs> the Cowboys needed that for you to now mm. come up here and say, Dak Prescott deserves a new contract. Don't tell he me don't, what I'm he saying. Don't, he don't deserve a new contract for that performance. Was it, a, was it a quality performance? Yes. Did Dak Prescott make some incredible throws? Absolutely. Did the Cowboys team show grit? Did they show determination? No doubt about it. But I'm going to tell you in my second lap, while, why what we saw yesterday mm, mm. is actually nothing to write home about. Oh, wow. Uh, Dak <laughs> earned the contract yesterday, but you're late to the party if you're saying, did he earn it yesterday? No, that was just a reminder of what he's earned and what he's going to be owed going forward. So I can answer this and say yes, but I've been saying yes, and that's why you're so defensive right now because you knew that these shots were going to come right at you and I'm at that broach level, right at the heart. Like, like Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> I'm dodging him. Like me, just like Neo. Right. Well, here's the red pill, Neo. You need to take this <laughs> one, not the blue one next time. You gave me one of the coldest, slowest takes that I've ever heard Acho give. And it's in part because you were in makeup, watching the herd and not doing your thing, focusing on your food, preparing your meal. Dak Prescott did go out there and do something he's never done before. And that was something you said in that cold, slow, freezing take right there. Dak Prescott went out there and what did he do? Had 400 yards passing over and three rushing touchdowns. Since that's never been done in NFL history, I think that's the first time Dak even did it, right? So this is something new, even in terms of complexion of how he won. But how, uh, but how did he well, win? Winning has complexion. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, Winning yeah. is light skin or dark skin. <laughs> okay, winning is white or black. I didn't say Come it was on, racial Marcellus. complexion. Come on, Marcellus. I'm just saying all wins don't look the same, okay, brother. Do they? And, and Dak Prescott gave you a win in a way that he's never done it before. Mm -hmm. Look at this situation, Nacho, and Jerry Jones... Stephen Jones mm -hmm. and Dak Prescott have all said, I am a cowboy for life. He is a cowboy for life. So when all of those parties, all those principles have agreement on it, the only thing they haven't agreed on are the terms. Mm -hmm. And the terms of this contract continue to rise.
they don't. To the top, let me tell you why. Please. He only needs comps in the high rent district. Mm -hmm. And last time I checked in the high rent district, Deshaun Watson is not necessarily having his best start to a season. Uh, also Kirk played two of the best teams in the NFL before. Hey, hey, hey you ain't lying there. That's a bad draw, but it's still, if you get paid that much, you got to overcome it. Kirk Cousins is not necessarily having the best start to this season, and he's in the high rent district. And if you really want to look at it, your boy, Money Green over there, Philadelphia Eagles, Carson Wentz is not having the best start to this season. So when you talk about Dak wanting his money, Mark his Douglas. money's going to be higher than we even ever anticipated. Ladies and gentlemen, the mistake I make in life is that I actually listen to Marcellus. Oh. Marcellus, you told me on Friday, yeah. you don't give credit to a bad student who takes an easy test. Yes, yes. The Atlanta Falcons are an easy test. Oh. Seven and nine last year. Oh, uh, the they won four, their last four and six of the last eight. After you, they, after uh, they uh, fired uh, three uh, coaches uh, in uh, November and then have fired another two in the offseason. Don't say they weren't hot. But let me, let me, let me get hot. to my point. Okay. Marcellus, <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons were an easy test. The Atlanta Falcons last week to Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson had just as many touchdowns as incompletions. Yeah, yeah. That is a phenomenal game. That That's is, a game that where is. you go, oh, man. That's a, that quarterback, he did his thing. Mm. But this same Dak Prescott, the Cowboys didn't look the same. Now, again, missing both offensive tackles. He overcame that. Overcame three first quarter, if not four first quarter, first quarter turnovers. Overcame a fake punt in the first quarter. Dak Prescott, he did overcome a lot. But here's what I mean when I say Cowboys fans, require more of yourselves. <laughs> Cowboys <laughs> fans, like, no, no, no. Can't oh. require more of yourselves than, oh. than this. Then what? Like, the Cow Think about this, 2017. Dak Prescott led the NFL in game-winning drives. He had four of them. Mm -hmm. I had to go back and do my homework because contrary to what you said three minutes ago, I show prepared for this show. I like so this let's now. talk about the preparation. Let's go. 2017, Dak Prescott, four game-winning drives. So I said, Marcellus, uh-oh, who were they against? Oh, uh, here you go. They were against the Cardinals, finished that year 8-8. Eight and eight. Mm -hmm. They were against the Giants, finished that year 3-13. and 13. Mm. They were against the Raiders, finished that year 6-10. and 10. Mm. And they were against the Eagles, the last game of the season. The Eagles already had everything locked up. Eagles played Nate Sudfeld as their, start, as their quarterback for the dominant game. And Dak Prescott won 6-0, if y'all remember. We've seen Dak do this before. Right. We've seen mm -hmm. Dak Prescott beat mm -hmm. average to below average teams. Again, mm -hmm. 2017, he had game-winning drives. An 8-8 eight and eight team, a 3-13 and 13 team, a 6-10 and 10 team. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Dak. We've seen you do that before. But Jerry saw him do that before and still didn't pay him. So if you, Marcellus, are now going to look at Dak Prescott beating the Atlanta Falcons, who they competed from a fear of failure as opposed to a desire to excel. Let's look no further than that onside kick. Mm. If you're going to look at Dak Prescott coming back against this Falcons team who gave that game away, and you're, if that's going to be your bargaining chip, it's just not very strong. It, that's my problem. It's just not very strong. Dak mm. had three 400-yard games last year, Marcellus. Mm. Dak didn't show us anything we haven't seen before. Dak can light up a stat sheet. Ugh. Dak is going to be great on your fantasy team. Dak can kill it in a box score. But I, I'm just not going to sit here and say, because they beat the Falcons, and, and not convincingly, Marcellus, because they beat the Falcons, you're now going to say, heck yeah, Dak deserves his money. You, <sighs> along with Cowboy fans, mm. y'all deserve more than that. First to of say all, that Dak don't separate me from Cowboy fans since I am a Cowboy fan, in part because my father's the biggest Cowboy fan in the world, it's and fact. I was forced to love the Cowboys growing up. And, and they then, cut you a check. And they cut me and a they big cut check. check. An unearned check, still, unrealized in <laughs> like terms Dak of what Prescott, I gave him. Maybe. But oh, but maybe. see, I just come to realize who you really are. You're a guy who plays it safe. You're a guy that buys into security to the point where you may even sacrifice your own optimal success. Interesting, Acho. I always clown you about your contract here and say you did buy into security. You lean into security instead of what I lean into which is get in mind. Mm -hmm. Security over there, safe bet. Hey, I got it, guys. All right, I don't have to worry. Woo, no more sleepless nights versus, hey, I'm not staying up all night because I know I am seeking what is mine. Mm -hmm. Getting yours is more important than what you try to say, which is security. Kirk Cousins has led the NFL since Dak has been in the league in terms of making the most amount Absolutely. of money. And Dak Prescott is saying, I'm going to follow what Kirk Cousins has done. Because no one has ever let it leave their lips that Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback in the game. Absolutely. But since Dak has been a professional football player, mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins has made the most. So Dak Prescott sits there and says, hmm, I could be like Acho and just take any contract they give me, which is a Carson Wentz, Jared Goff contract, which sounds amazing to most people named Acho. But to a guy named Wiley, I'm like, Dak, the numbers keep going up. 
bet on yourself. And speaking of the numbers, this is a guy who, once again, is third in the NFL in terms of passing yards. This is a guy who has zero but interceptions. Me, here's, here's your fourth problem, all-time Marcellus. quarterback rating. Here's How are you problem. sliding that? Do, do the Redskins, do you think they're like, man, I wish we had Kirk Cousins after he put up three interceptions, no tugs, think, and what, 70, think, 80 yards you yesterday? Think, you think last Excuse year they didn't want to say that? You didn't want to say that? You didn't want to say that last year? But I'm saying... Stabilizing that franchise. Like, are, 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 you think there's a... Regret? Case Keenum was 11-3. and three. What stabilization are you talking about? You, Case, Keenum was, was, Case Keenum was 11-3 in 2017. Thank Here's you. my point. That's my my point. point is this. My point is very simple. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott, you're still not sure. What did you learn about the Dak Prescott yesterday? What did you learn about the Cowboys oh, yesterday? Oh, I got this. Please, I'm uh, waiting for a good answer. All, you have a new head coach who's integrating into a new system that you just met a month ago. And you came out and talk about a tough draw to get the Rams. And people like you keep thinking the Rams are sorry. Because they, they sorry, backpedaled to a 9-7. Are they elite yet? Are, are we don't know if they're elite. What were they, what were they before? Oh, I should have interrupted you. Go ahead. Uh, the year before? Making, I, did, I interrupted a bad point. So continue <laughs> making. Continue <laughs> making. <laughs> what were they doing? year before? What were the Rams before a 9-7 and seven year? And that was a backpedaling year for that team. And then they lose to that team by three points. Then you get the Falcons, who are trying to self-correct from their loss in Seattle, and then you beat that team. What did you learn? Dak Prescott can lead these boys. Dak Prescott is resilient. That this situation right now, once it gets on track, can be a positive situation. You've known this, and I've seen this. Every time you watch film, or as a collective, when you look back at a season, you can point to a moment or two, and say, that's what galvanized us. Mm -hmm. What you learned yesterday is you have a potential galvanizing moment for a team that needs to find attraction under a new head coach. The operative word there is potential. Again, Dak Prescott, he puts up great numbers. Yesterday... That's not potential. Great, yesterday was great, great numbers. numbers. Yesterday, he did... He led the team to a comeback win. But for Marcellus, years. look at the history. Dak has had four touchdown games before. You're using that against no, him? No, 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 no. I don't it, but, not, point. but here's my point. What? He's had six of them. The five previous, prior to yesterday, none were against playoff teams. We're going to look back, Marcellus, in 12 weeks and see the Falcons are 6-10. and 10. And are you really going to count the Cowboys' one-point win over a 6-10-10, or 10 and 10, 7 and 7-9 Falcons <laughs> as something to hang your hat on? What? You, along with Cowboys fans, have to deserve more. Right, what so I'm saying is this. Be who's in front of you. Be who has a different color on than you. Ain't my fault I'm in the same division as Washington and the Giants. And, you and know, look you at know this situation it's, like that. it's not just that you win, it is how you win. And you know that. The and Seahawks are winning convincingly. This win against the Falcons was not convincing. What are I'm they, what are they playing and... for? BCS ranking? Who cares how you get there if you get there? You acting like, well, at the end, the committee's going to say, well, you know what? You move up a couple of rankings. This is a situation where Dak Prescott found himself down in the fourth quarter and was the guy that put them on his deck. Not his back, his deck and led that so, team to a so victory, you but this. you want to discount No, no, that. I don't want to. But we also, we have to look at the whole picture. Remember in the first quarter when Dak fumbled the ball to allow the Falcons to go up 14-0? Mm -hmm. Are we just going to sit here and act like, Ooh. he put him in the hole, he got him out the hole? Ooh. Thank you. Okay. But I'm not just going to ignore the fact that there was a hole that Dak, Zeke, the tight end shows that all those players put them in and just be like, okay, well, y'all got us out of it, so kudos to y'all for getting us out of it. Remember, y'all put us in the hole. Yes, yes. The only point I am making is last Finally, week. we get to your only point. No, no, no. The <laughs> only point I'm making what? is this. You cannot sit here and only give credit to someone for getting you out of a hole that they helped put you in. Russell Wilson, last week, four touchdowns, four incompletions, no hole, convincing victory, okay. convincing Amazing. game. And that's why Dak, he makes the most. Dak Prescott, this game was convincing at the end. Yes, 400 yards passing. All I'm saying is this. We've seen Dak do this before. And 2017, he did Hey, we Last seen Russell year, Wilson do what he's doing right now before, and I'm going to get to that in the next block. The point of it is, Patrick Mahomes makes the most because he just leaped for all Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson makes more than Russell Wilson now. Oh, wait a minute. Is Dak doing something better than Deshaun Watson right now? Actually, wait, he is. You... But you keep betting on the security. Your whole premise, and this is flawed, is because Dak doesn't have a deal that Dak hasn't convinced him that he deserves a deal. He's already turned down reportedly $35 million, and the tag keeps going up for Dak Prescott. His floor is $37 million in the franchise tag. His floor is what Jerry if already offered him at 35. How is that a right. failure? If, remember, Marcellus, what happened yesterday? Who went in the game? He got Cowboys. He got concussed. Exactly. He potentially did. He didn't get concussed. Well, I mean, he got, oh, he potentially did. He potentially did. And he came so back. You're sitting here banking on the fact that that actually won't happen again. Dak hasn't missed a game because of injury, sir. Dak hasn't really missed a snap because of injury. But yesterday, what happened? He missed time because of injury. Wow. Again, all I'm saying is this. 
criticize me for playing it safe, but that money is in my hand. And that you money know is what's in my so hand. funny? On one part of your argument, you tell me, hey, man, he's done this before, so bet on what he's done. Bet on his history and don't bet on something new because nothing new came. But then you try to bring up an injury to scare Dak to live in some fear, some anxiety, because he's never been hurt before. And it may happen. You know what may happen? What's, Him actually getting What's paid. the Falcons an easy test? At least give me that. Because you said you said the same thing on Friday. You talked about easy test. Was I want to say yes. Test? My, my projections are the Falcons are not going to be that good. But they finished the season strong last year. And coming to this year, they had some So momentum. you're going, so at least, at least admit to me this. I ain't doing You're jack. giving Dak Prescott credit <laughs> for acing an easy test. It's not an easy test. You just said the Falcons were an I easy said, test. I also said that they won six of their last eight. Is that an easy test? Hey, no, no, no. See, now you're talking about both sides of the I got to go, too. Yeah, you got to go to break. Gotta go you got to go to break because right I got to make a few up at the top of the hour. I never know you were that safe. <laughs> we're not done in Dallas. They got the win, but Mike McCarthy has some questionable decisions. We'll tell you if the job is too big for him. But first, the Seahawks let Russell Wilson cook, and he delivered a first-class meal. We'll tell you if he's officially the best quarterback in the league next. Speak for yourself. Presented by Hyundai. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's talk about Russell Wilson, who's been doing plenty of cooking this mm. season. Russ got a career high with five touchdown passes to lead the Seahawks over the Patriots last night. In his first two games of the season, he already has nine touchdown passes and only 11. You heard me right, 11 incompletions. Recently, Russell oh. said he was, quote, without a doubt, the best quarterback in the league, and he seemed like a man on a mission after the game as well. Take a listen. Mm. Definitely in the zone. Um, locked in, focused, dialed in. My teammates are too. It's it's a great group of men, like I said. Um, you know, I, I I've I've been ready to play. Uh, you know, since the last time we didn't, you know, we had our last game in Green Bay. You know, I just been every day. It's you know, my mindset. You know, just my performance team and everything else. Just everything that we put into is just getting ready. You know, and trying to be great. <laughs> I hear you, Russ. Keep cooking. Joined by L.A. But Marcellus, you up first. Is Russell Wilson the best quarterback in the NFL right now? No. Unfortunately, I have to say no. Is he playing amazing football? Yes. Will he win NFC Offensive Player of the Week? Yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're the best quarterback in football. And, Acho, I, I knew I was going to have to deal with some smoke from you today. Of because course. Uh, you of know, course. you know, my, my daughter's your age, and she lives on Twitter like you. And um, she had to send me this from Acho. She said, check out your boy right here. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and I see this on my timeline. Russell Wilson will finally win MVP this season. And once again, I knew that millennials speak how they don't have perspective, how they don't do their how history, daughter, how, they, homework for how they don't... <laughs> Pre why, why is she prepping a show for you? Hey, hey you know what? Because I know who I'm going against. I need to step down to that level to ah. get ready for it. <laughs> I'm going to deal with <laughs> And so I said, let me prepare my nuggets on my level for Acho. So... As I learned, Acho... What about me, guys? <laughs> <laughs> what about me? I'm you know, on this segment. What about me? Well, we'll see what you, where you're going with this, but okay. Acho right, is go. a prisoner of the moment. So since oh. he wants to be a prisoner of the moment, let's build a bigger prison for him to live in. Uh, this year, there are six quarterbacks that are 2-0, and oh, like Russell Wilson, 500-plus passing yards, like Russell Wilson, have five or more total touchdowns, like Russell Wilson. Those names are... You ready for this? Mahomes... Rodgers, Murray, Roethlisberger, and Josh Allen. Oh, okay. But let's go back to last year when there were four <laughs> quarterbacks who had the same situation. And, and you know who those names were? Mahomes, Prescott. Oh, oh, Dax. Never done it. Uh, Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson. Oh, let's go back the year before where there were four quarterbacks who had the same stat line or better. Mahomes, Fitzpatrick, Dalton, and Bortles. Wow. It's amazing. I just went back three years, and I only said Russell Wilson's name once. But I said Patrick Mahomes' name every single year. So the answer really is Patrick Mahomes. But that's not the answer that will satisfy Acho. And you know what, Acho? It shouldn't satisfy you. Let's go even deeper. Whoa. Let's compare him to my favorite quarterback and who I think is the best quarterback in the league. And despite winning the MVP last year, is playing even better this year in Lamar Jackson. Jackson and Russell Wilson both have 40 passing touchdowns since last year and only six interceptions. But Jackson has more wins. <gasps> oh, my God. Jackson has a higher passer rating. Oh, my God. And more total touchdowns. So... If you really want to answer this question, the adult version, not millennial version, you have to say either Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, not Russell Wilson. Somebody in Marcellus's corner 
uh, get the get the Vaseline ready because I'm about to bloody oh. him up a little bit under under the eyes a little bit. Right here, about to right. get bloodied up. Come on, mm. Marcellus. Come on. That was so ignorant. That was not good. only was that and not even ignorant. That was ignorant. ignorant. That was ignorant. That was lazy. That was just an uneducated opinion and uneducated take. <laughs> if I'm a prisoner of the moment. Russell Wilson's moment has occurred for nine years. So it's a long moment that, Ooh. sir, I am a prisoner of. I'll come but back to that. Let me get to the facts, Marcellus. Don't try to lower the bar or lower the standard to allow lesser quarterbacks to be in the same conversation as Russell Wilson. Okay. You said there are several quarterbacks that have thrown for five or more passing touchdowns this season, including Ryan Tannehill. Russell's thrown for nine. That's 80% more than the number in which you just included in order to make your lazy argument fit your lazy narrative. I didn't even it say Ryan Tannehill. Oh. I don't it's know what you're talking about, Ryan Tannehill. I ain't saying that. Tannehill has thrown six, so I just noticed off the top of my head. I probably <laughs> pro showed. So, Wrong, come King, on, Marcellus, yards. but you know what? Let me beat you at your own game again. So I don't far, try right. to take the throne. That's not my job. I know my responsibilities. Full screen prints oh, in the building. Uh -oh, we were uh -oh. talking about the full screen. What you got MVP you know what happens Marcellus. when you're a prince. Two games. Russell Wilson, two games. first in passer rating, <laughs> first in completion percentage, two, two first in passing touchdowns, oh, wow. second in passing second? yards per attempt amongst six. the qualifying quarterbacks. Second Marcellus, it's not even a conversation six. right now. Lamar Jackson, he is balling, but again, it's not just what you do. It's who do you do it against. The Patriots last... I don't know. You can take off the full screen. I want to see these two gentlemen that I'm about to Second slay. Second and six quick. is the I best. I want to see these two gentlemen I'm about to slay. The Patriots allow slay. four passing so, touchdowns. So you know what my opinion is? I, already, yeah. I can feel your energy. You tell I can feel your energy. <laughs> I can feel your negative yeah. energy. The right. Patriots allowed right. four passing touchdowns all season nah, last year to receivers. New year. Russell Wilson had five passing touchdowns to receivers just yesterday, gentlemen. Mm. So, Marcellus, if you're going to come at me, please, at least come correct. <laughs> go ahead. Sir. Boy, that boy good. All right, here, here's what I'll say. No, no, he is not the best quarterback in the National <clears> Football <throat> League. So you read my pulse and my vibe correctly coming into the segment. Uh, but he is playing the best football right now of any quarterback, Claire and I'll give him that, <laughs> all right? Great. Hold on, hold on, Macho, Acho, okay, hold on okay, one second. Because here's what the court get hot, forgot. Get hot, with, all of the, with all of the stats that you guys have introduced to this segment and worrying about who's going to outdo duel who in, in the, this discussion, one very vital piece of, of important information that took place, and I have much maligned him. I have said how much... Two paste is left in the container and then the squeeze and push deal with Cam Newton. If Cam gets that touchdown at the end of that game, uh -oh. night, I'm not even so sure we say Russell Wilson was the best quarterback in that game. Uh -oh. All right. So to me, I'm looking at the situation now as Cam did more to prove to me about greatness last night than even Russell Wilson what? did in that game. First and foremost, I told you, what's up? they failed what's They the failed him by making a call that everybody in America oh, so and lazy. around the world knew so was going LA. to take place, Come. throw a play-action pass, Thank and you. Cam Newton is the topic of conversation on everybody's Get a thing. We're going to talk about today. Cam next block. But right now, we're talking okay. about Russ, L.A., and the fact but of the matter to is... to make the point, but to make the point... Make it. Yeah, make avocado, it. Acho. Make it. <laughs> make if it. you don't have every single player on the Seahawks defense running to where you motioned and shifted oh every single oh. player you have oh. available Ignan. to where you're going to run the ball... Cam Newton shows that he was the best quarterback in the he game. Still, he still so how can you be the he best quarterback in a... How can, still you still, how can you still have the conversation that Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the National Football League when this play right here could have determined oh. if we're talking about the greatness of Mark, Cam Mark, Newton I, versus Russell Wilson? I don't know Wilson. if y'all just felt that earthquake because LeVar just moved the goalpost. And then, <laughs> no, okay, so no it was way. either LeVar or it was an earthquake. LeVar, LeVar, no, even, no. even if the Patriots no. do win... Ooh. Yesterday, even if somehow that would have happened, which it didn't happen, okay. so I'm not going to waste any more energy, but these next 15 seconds talking about that, the okay. only reason they okay. would have is because Greg Olson dropped a perfect pass from Russell Wilson. Perfect. But again, I'm not going to waste any energy that talking about that because the only thing that ruined Russell Wilson from having, again, a nearly flawless game was his own teammate. Didn't have to do it rough. But Marcellus, think about this. Over the first two weeks, Russell Wilson has, what, 12? Not even 12. 11, excuse me. 11 incompletions. I mean, and weeks. nine touchdowns. And LeVar, 
if you're saying he's not the best player, but he's playing the in best. The game. That's in the game. oxymoronic. In the game. Russell, 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 it is. Russell Wilson, no, it's not. Russell Wilson came no, it's into the not. season a top close. three player in the NFL. A top two okay. quarterback in the NFL. So if he's a top two quarterback. I don't know top two. You, who, whose list is that? Patrick Mahomes. That, those, those are right. Those, those are the right. Who's list you put him on top two in the league? Who, who, was, what list okay, you draw on that Make him top three. Show me. Ooh. Show me the source. Ma make him top three. Either way, if he comes into top the league five? as a top three quarterback in the NFL, y'all see the laziness I got to deal with. If he comes into the, in the, <laughs> a top three quarterback in the NFL, but he's playing the best, that makes him the best. And not only is he playing the best, he's playing the best Can by I far in a way. Please. Please. Uh, um, uh, man, I, I've been working with Ach only two months and I've already seen how he moves the goalposts on what's the it's best. Not move. Playing the it's best does here. not mean the best. If playing the best meant you are the best, then Devin Booker was the best player in basketball when he was balling. Jamal Murray was the I best player in basketball. Exactly but you, but you know what? Matter. You know what? Hey, I already hey, hey. Hey, Marcellus, uh -huh. send Sister. my Hall of Fame ring and jacket to my address. Yeah, I, I want it's player of the week. Your best means <laughs> like, you're give the me best. my, I should be in it, but. Send me my jacket, I'm please, not even done with I this dude. I, I'm just right now slicing up what he's saying, which is nonsense, and then I'm going to get to some sense, nonsense. which is what I have right. to say. Acho, let me help, help you with the definition. I need no help. Here's a help with the perfect definition. I need a little Get the help. Yeah. Get the sentence out, Marcellus. Perfect <laughs> pass is not, oh, he threw it up high and he deflected it and it was a pick six. As my therapist says, a perfect pass is a pass you throw that they can't drop. <laughs> Let that marinate on it for a second. This is something you can't drop right here. Stick it to me. I've seen that drop. I've seen that, I've seen that I drop. I ain't never before. seen that one drop. Here's the thing. Let me get to my points. You know who uh, Russell Wilson is, as, you, as Acho wants to say, his long moment has been nine years. You're right. It's been a long moment. He is Drew Brees 2.0, and I'm going to give you the explanation of why he's Drew Brees 2.0. Sometimes you could just be the guy on the outside caught up in the wash of a tremendous rivalry, whether that's team a team or that's individual versus individual. Drew Brees found himself on the outside of the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning era. Then that shifted from Tom Brady and Peyton Manning to Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And then you enter a Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson is sitting there like, it's my turn, it's my turn. But what happened is the era shifted again. Lamar it's Mahomes Patrick Jackson. Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. And he and sits there like Drew Brees. Watson. But let me give you yeah. why, Acho, because I know you don't like my opinions. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. They're amazing. But let me give you to you what happened last year in a microcosm. And this is why Russell Wilson is Drew Brees 2.0. Remember last year when Russell Wilson started just as hot? Last year, he had 22 touchdowns. One interception, and all the MVP focus was in two places. It was over there in Baltimore a little bit, and it was over there in Seattle a lot bit. And then Russell Wilson, with all that attention, under the microscope, getting all this look and all of this focus and emphasis, finishes the season with just nine touchdowns and four interceptions. Not exactly the same clip. Where you going As with you, this? Where, I'm where going you going with this? Is, where we going? going? You got to finish the deal. If you're going to be called great, you great. have to be consistently Absolutely. excellent. So whatever he sets his standard, mm -hmm. he has to continue to have that standard or you will never be considered the best. Mm -hmm. Right now, the guys who are the best, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. or go back in time, Tom Brady, right. Peyton Manning, yep. Aaron Rodgers. You know what they all have in common what that him and Drew Brees don't? What they got? NFL MVPs. Russell Wilson can't even get a vote. So Mar finish oh. what you start if you're going to be considered the greatest. Marcellus, you just walked into this trap. Oh, no, I ain't. And uh -oh. Lord, he ain't trap know house. he was going there. The trap house? Uh -oh. Most touchdown uh -oh. passes through two games in the Super Bowl era. Uh -oh. Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. No, no, you listen to the list. The list is all the names you said. You Patrick point. Mahomes in 2018, MVP. Peyton Manning, 2013, MVP. Drew Brees, 2009, Super Bowl winner. So, if you're talking about... Well, the MVP, I mean, you got quiet on there. Uh, I hear oh, MVP. I'm sorry. Super Bowl winner, my bad. No, 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 no. sorry, Drew Brees. You, you, you just won the got... Super Bowl that year. Here's my point, Marcellus. <laughs> Russell Wilson is on pace to be among those names that you spoke of. But again, because y'all don't think about these things, and y'all must not have been watching the game, I just want to show y'all, along with the rest of the world, why Russell Wilson is currently the best don't quarterback in the pretty. National Football League. Oh, no, no. Because I'm going to show you what Russell Wilson, along with probably... Only Russell Wilson can do. Best deep ball thrower. I get Look at the placement on this, Marcellus. Even if it's McCourty would have nice stayed ball. up. It's pretty. It's only his receiver more can nice catch. Pretty ain't perfection. Right and now, ain't the best. Right now, Russell and Wilson pretty, pretty is both don't pretty make the best. and perfection. No. He's pretty and perfection. I am my case.
LeVar? I, en I enjoy your discussion points, Acho. Me I, too. I like the passion that you have. Yeah. Even you're you're wrong, but I, <laughs> I believe the passion makes your discussion points believable. So I'm, I'm okay with that. And for you're you to use me. Who, like, For who, you to who, accuse me of moving the goalpost because I made a very strong point that how can you say he's the best if Cam Newton scores that touchdown? He's not even considered the best quarterback in that game. No, but you if, can't if make it's him. But the problem is, is the problem. Problem. we all have a Merry the Christmas. Patrick Mahomes okay, over here. Oh, my gosh. gosh. Lamar Jackson, that's... Patrick Mahomes over here. Ain't no ifs with if that. If your uncle wasn't your uncle, it'd be your aunt. No ifs. Like, no ifs. ifs. No ifs. You saying that Russell Wilson is better Patrick that. Mahomes. I will, I will say this. Hey, I will say this. I believe that could have been a preview of what could be the Super Bowl this year. I felt like we watched two of the best teams in the National Football League go head to head. So when you see the level of talent and preparation and coaching jousting that was taking place in that game, mm. it was clear to see that you had to be at your best in a game like that Correct. in order for this to even Wilson be a was. valid conversation. Russell, Russell yeah, I give that, that love six. to Russell Wilson. I give that love and I acknowledge that to Russell Wilson. But with that being said, all of the things that I was looking at and, and felt was like, whoa, I'm blown away right now, was Cam Newton. Mm. And, and honestly speaking, I feel like with, with the performance that Cam had last night, and I know we're going to talk about Cam later, but the performance that he had last night, if he scores that touchdown, if we if, are talking about if. the continuous, but, but it was so profound in that moment of failure on that last play, it was so profound that I would still, I would still be bold enough to say that right now, Cam Newton has a better chance of winning the race against Lamar Jackson and one Patrick Mahomes in this MVP race mm. than Russell Wilson. Yeah. And that's real yes. facts. Yes. You can lean on all Get the facts you want to lean start... on. Hey, you can talk about all those different things. Vote. But I'm telling you right now, Cam Newton has put himself in the MVP race for this season. Even with a loss Talk against about Seattle Cam. We're last not saying We're talking about the best you quarterback. Use, you said he's the best quarterback. So, so, so we're going to so, talk about the so best the quarterback. Point is, the point is, is, is that Russell Wilson... Block on this block. All these, all these, Russell, I don't know what you're going to say next block. Russell Wilson cannot be Cam the best block. quarterback. <laughs> he cannot be the best quarterback <laughs> if coming I'm out done. of the game... I, my IQ got lower My IQ got lower this block. My IQ got lower this block. Somebody bring me a textbook. I got to get smart again. Coming up, Brady's the best quarterback. Got his first win as a buck. That's why he has some stumbles MVP along the way. Right I'm going to tell you if Brady's bunch are MVP really Super Tom Bowl Brady. contenders, <laughs> next, speak for yourself presented by Hunter. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Get up, Acho. It wasn't that bad. Let's move on to Tampa where Tom Brady got his first win as a buck Sunday against the Panthers. Brady shook off the season opening disappointment, but he had some help. Enter for net and all the muscles. Broke out with just over 100 rushing yards and a 46-yard touchdown run to seal it. Nobody catching him. Despite the win, Brady said, quote, I think we still are a long way from where we need to be. LeVar's back with us after that beatdown. Acho's still alive. I don't know how. Acho, let's know. start with you, Ben. Tom Brady's Bucks look like Super Bowl contender. Marcellus, before I disrespect you any further, sir, <laughs> can you just answer me? Are you saying yes or no? Because I just want to know if I need to offend you. Yes, I mean, they are. Okay. Uh, see, here's the problem. I, I, I'm so disappointed in Marcellus, specifically today, more than any other day in the history of television in which I've been oh, watching wow. him. And I've been the watching him since he's television. been in other networks. Here's your problem, Marcellus. Problem. Your expectations for teams are so pathetically low that it is oh, astronomically yeah, embarrassing. Is... No, the Bucks don't yet look like Super Bowl contenders. Give it time. But Marcellus, they beat the Panthers. The Panthers were 6-10 and 10 last year. The Panthers' star player, there one of the best go. players in the league, was hurt. The Panthers' head coach came from college. Their offensive coordinator came from college. Their defensive coordinator came from college. So you're going to look at the Bucks, who beat the Panthers. It was a one-possession game with about four minutes or two minutes left in the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, they look like Super Bowl contenders because they beat the measly Panthers that were playing uh, 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 handicapped. Like, let's be real. The Buccaneers, they did look great yesterday. They're starting to find the rotation. Leonard Fournette, he's getting more carries than now Ronald Jones. I now think that's about around. to come. Leonard Fournette looked like a beast. Mike Evans, he finally got his again. Seven catches, 104 yards yesterday. But let's go focus on the conductor. Let's focus on Tom Brady. Even though they got the win yesterday, Tom Brady, he still had, through these two games, 
He still has a career low in yards per game in the last decade. His yards per attempt, still a career low in the last 17 years. Tom Brady is not as if he's doing anything that is fantastic. So, no, the Bucs do not yet look like Super Bowl contenders. Mm. And here's the problem the Buccaneers are going to have to face. Mm. I got no issue with the Bucs. Here's a problem. Like Y'all aren't going to have another great litmus test until about week six. Think about there it. Your next go. three games, you're playing you the Bears. You're playing the Broncos. Ugh. You're playing teams that just aren't really going to give y'all a great litmus test. So the Bucks don't look like Super Bowl contenders now, and we're not going to know until week six when they play the Packers if we're being get, uh, if we're keeping it a thousand percent real. So Marcellus, I'm not sure how you plan on lying to the audience right now. I see you're still writing down notes, trying to conjure up your lies. No, I'm just writing down your lies. I can't wait to hear it. Go ahead. Okay, you ready? Uh, first, I already oh let the cat out the lies. bag. <laughs> Tom Brady and the Bucks are contenders. <laughs> what are they contending for? I, I'm going to tell you why spot? they're contenders. A wild card spot? You know what you need to do, Acho, sometimes? Just sit back, relax, don't say anything, and watch the throne. Ooh, the throne. Ooh. Watch the throne. Makes me think of Ooh. Tom Brady and his greatness, or makes me think of Jay-Z and Kanye. Watch the throne. Oh, when they had crazy. a song, so when they said... We're quoting Kanye. Well, well, Oh, I, I love Kanye. Kanye. I ain't gonna get me on that. Hey, we could do a whole show on Kanye. Those. And yeah, Kanye. Kanye was thing. just seen peeing on a Grammy Award, Marcellus. Oh That's who we're gosh. quoting. On I don't. Television? I don't know what you did with your oh Big Ten Award, God. Big Twelve Awards. <laughs> but hey, I didn't, has, I didn't urinate that, on. Him. I, well, I didn't urinate on. One that doesn't take away from some of the things he's done oh, correctly. Get to your point. And one get of the things point. he did correctly was shot. create an album called Watch the Throne with Jay Z. What you gonna say about him? And more importantly, they had a song. Who gonna stop me? Uh -huh. Who's going to stop, man? Uh -huh. And when I think about it in those terms, and then I use Acho when he doesn't pee on his awards, <laughs> and he tells me that you're judged based on your competition. I don't, you know, when he first started the show, it's about the competition. It, 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 it doesn't matter how good it looks, how bad it looks, it's just beating the other guys. So then I start looking at who's going to stop him. Who's going to stop him, huh? Green Bay. Is Green Bay that much better this year? It may, hey, it looks that way. It looks that way, except once again, what they're doing what they always do, beat up on their division, and then we'll see what the litmus test is, Acho, after they get out the division. What about San Francisco? Good Lord, friendly fire, pop, 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 everybody down right now. They should recover, they should respond. We'll see. Some of these injuries may be season long. We'll see. New Orleans. Oh, week one, Tom Brady in a new situation, new system. They shut down Drew Brees and Alvin Kamara and Whooped Michael them. Thomas. Whooped them. And That's they, what happened. And the they, lost, them. they lost that game. But you got to figure... Go back to relax. Why are they sitting there fearing anybody? Who is out there that could stop Tom Brady and the Bucks? Now, here's the greater point. Because last week, the sky was falling, according to Acho, because Tom Brady was 0-1. Even though Tom Brady in 21 years has never been 0-2, including this year. Never been 0-2. But more importantly, when he was 0-1, I don't want to understand why Acho doesn't do his homework. Hmm? Those three years he was 0-1, he went to the Super Bowl all three years the top and won two of them. The With point the top is, defense. this is a team that doesn't see anyone in their way that they fear. Who going to stop them? And they got the guy who's sitting on the throne, so you need to watch him. I, I tend to agree a little bit with both of you. Come on, come on. I do not the look fence, at them homie. as being... Hold on, hold on. I do not look at them as being a Super Bowl contender today. Today, I do not. But here's why. The show I, I look at them as, okay, the who is going to stop them? Like you said, Marcellus, we'll right? There, there are a few good teams on their schedule. Their schedule actually is in favor of them having some some good you know good weeks ahead of them. Yes. But I'm with Acho mm -hmm. on the fact that they are supposed to beat these teams, but take it the other direction and saying that's more pressure. We're going to find out, we are going to find out in the next couple of weeks if they're a contender, Acho. And you know why? It, because it's not just about beating teams when you're talking about being a Super Bowl contender. It's about style points. Mm. How do you beat those teams? Oh, all right. God. Yo, I was stop. okay. I was okay with the way they beat stop. Carolina yesterday. All right. Yeah, you gotta have if you're gonna tell me you are a Super Bowl contender, you do Look have like to beat it. the teams you're supposed to beat. Absolutely. They're already out the gate. Oh, really? They're already out the gate with a strike against them because they lost to a Super Bowl contender. Mm -hmm. So you can say, oh, it's week one, but you know what? That week one Super Bowl contender did what with Tampa Bay? Mm -hmm. Disposed of them. Okay. You go out oh. against a team in Carolina that you're supposed to win, and you beat them. You look at this trick play right here. That concerns me. Why? Tom Brady, uh, Tom, 
You can't get the ball downfield any better than that to your guys. That's okay. But we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks against teams they should beat how well they play against them and what they're able to do against them. That will dictate our vantage point of how good this team really is versus how good they can possibly be. And to me, they got to hit what they can possibly be before I can start talking about they're a Super Bowl contender. If we aren't going to praise the Browns for beating the Bengals, then how dare we, <laughs> in the same mouth and same vocal cords, not a bad praise, point. The praise the Bucks not a bad for point. beating the Panthers, Sir Marcellus I'm here. Wiley. I'm here. How can we do that? We, so we came up here on point. Friday and we said, man, the Browns beat the worst team in the league. How dare we? You know, it was a bad team. They took an easy test. That's what Marcellus Baker said. Doesn't get a pass. Pass. Baker doesn't get a pass. That. Baker no, wasn't that impressive. He here, wasn't even the best team on the feet. He wasn't even the best quarterback on the field. But then... The same Marcellus, just 96 hours later, the Bucks are world beaters. Oh, my God. Who's going to stop them, huh? Who's going to stop anybody? <laughs> Marcellus, they didn't look that good. They were only ahead of the by seven. Uh, uh. With 157 <laughs> left. Who's going to stop them? Anybody could stop them. A plethora of teams could stop the Buccaneers. Because the Buccaneers... A plethora. Pl plethora. Yeah, we got to bring out SAT words because Marcellus is an SAT type of individual. Anybody could stop them. Marcellus, they're not that impressive. Ooh. At least not thus far. Ooh. Can not they yet. get that impressive? Ooh. Sure. But Marcellus, the person on the throne, Tom Brady, he may have to leave the kingdom sooner than later because, again... Lowest yards per your lowest yards per attempt out. since his rookie season. Oh, it's out. Can he get the football out? You talking about get it out? You need to tell that to Tom Brady. Get it out, because that's the problem. Oh. So you're sitting here banking on this goat, but like I told you on Friday, oh. and I will tell you again, oh. we haven't seen Tom Brady the goat since 2017. Keep hoping and wishing on a dream. Wow. Y'all really gonna put this on me, knowing that I respond best when it's on me, <laughs> when the pressure comes. All right, they lost in week one. Um, you guys should have done your homework and said they should lose in week one. I one, did. they played against the New Orleans Saints, who has won that uh, division. I call that you win, sir. Um, two, Bruce Arians is two and five in week can, one. Can you, but, can but you also, rewind? But also, Marcellus. the rest Marcellus. of September, he has a winning record and 10 and four. So you should have known oh he was going to lose week one. What do and you the mean they should have lost? All I'm what saying is mean? the continuity. A they're Super going Bowl against a team that won 13 games last year with continuity in this pandemic That's a season. Super Bowl contender. Yes, yes. Now, I'm going to make my point. And then y'all can beat up my point, but you can't beat me up. We already see y'all. Oh, uh, this is going to play on, out. Go ahead, go Here's ahead, the dude. thing. Go ahead, I keep hearing litmus tests and how a win should look and complexion of win and the way you win, and that's how you're going to tell if you're a Super Bowl contender. I can't believe y'all checks going to clear by saying stuff like this. Last year, we saw five teams in the NFC all have 10 wins or more. The 49ers, they passed the eyeball test, didn't they? And that's why they were in the Super Bowl. Let's talk about the Green Bay Packers. 13 wins. Where's the litmus test? Oh, they actually didn't pass the eye test. There were question marks against them. They were one game away from the Super Bowl. Do they scare this Tampa Bay Bucks team this year? The Saints, 13 wins last year. Do they scare them this year after yes. they already yes. shut them down in yes. their winning formula? Drew Brees under 200 yards. Michael Thomas, what, 17 yards? Kamara got shut down. Do they scare them? Yes. And what, one game under their belt, they do not scare them. Let's talk about the Seahawks, who could only win when the Garden quarterback gets knocked out as Nacho says illegal hit, dirty hit, and that's a 13 win team. And then you have the Vikings who are struggling this year, despite them here. going out there last year. Struggling. And the same Vikings that beat the Saints last year in the playoffs, but they're struggling this year. My point is, what is you point? guys can keep telling me who is daunting out there, which teams you got to be scared of, which teams are formidable. But you know what? When you look at that landscape and realize, the Tampa Bay Bucks have now inserted themselves right there, right. and that's well, why they're Baker, contending. LeVar, Baker and LeVar, the Browns are, Marcellus, Baker and the Browns are today contenders. Marcellus is like a go. snake with no venom. He comes out oh. here a little intimidating because the suit's a little tight. He comes out here oh. talking and barking real loud, but you realize his bite and his words are lethal, and they're not lethal at all, and they're meaningless. Marcellus, you mm. just uttered a whole bunch of nothings, but none Utters. of that meant nothing How? to the point. How? You're, you're going to get bait. If you're going to go to the top of the NFC Mountain, those are the teams that we're supposed to face on record. And you're saying and right now, none of those teams are scared. The 49ers are all beat up. They lost to the Saints. They lost to That's my point, Marcellus. They lost to the Saints. They 
Oh, you didn't catch the continuity Please. point? Y'all really gonna go there when this team first game out is playing against a team that won a division three times but in 13 games that, last year. Does that and matter? they shut down all of their weapons. The question, Marcel, is on, does it matter? If we get, yes, to, it does. If we get does. to week 17 of the season, man, it was still Bruce you know Arians' what? first year with Tom Brady, so you know what? They really you. didn't have it. You know what, Acho, let me give it to you why it matters. You Please. remember when the Giants won the Super Bowl and they played the New England Patriots for week 17 and it was they were 9-7? and seven. People were like, oh, that was a close game, that was a good game, but they lost. Some people took your lane. Oh, it means nothing. They lost. Who cares? And some people said, they got a formula off of that, and they got themselves bruised but not beaten, and they will respond if they get a chance to see that team again. They did, and they beat a perfect team. If I could beat a perfect team, how come I can't beat a 13-win team that lose to Minnesota the year before in the playoffs? I'm dropping my around here. has moved again. All right, well, speaking of moving, let's get up out this block right now. Coming up, Anthony Davis hit the game winner for the Lakers last night, but it begs the question, why didn't LeBron take it? Ooh, we'll break that down. The Next Lakers are the contenders. <laughs> welcome back to the NBA. Let's talk. Well, welcome back to speak for yourself. I got mm. excited. Mm. Let's move to the NBA, Damn. where the Lakers blew a 16-point lead and were down by one with two seconds left when AD hit a game-winning three-pointer to take a commanding 2-0 series lead. Anthony Davis, he scored the Lakers' final 10 points, including the game winner. LeBron had 26 points in the win, but the MVP runner-up was basically a decoy on the final possession. Joined now by Slick. Rick, mm -hmm. always happy to see my guy. My dog. But Marcellus, got to start with you. Was it a bad look that LeBron didn't take the shot when the Lakers win, the last shot? No, that wasn't a bad look at all. Uh, it's a bad look to ask this question. This is a pretty <laughs> weak question. Uh, uh, but I will use my strength to answer this weak question, Acho. I know you suggested this. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. <sighs> The goal is to make a winning play. Uh, I don't give a damn by hook, by crook. I don't care if the mascot comes out here and makes it. If they don't say, hey, six men on the court, that's who should get the ball into the basket. But, you know, it's interesting. This is supposed to be a bad look on LeBron, but this wasn't a bad look on Michael Jordan, nor should have ever been a bad look on Michael Jordan when we heard of Steve Kerr and Paxson, John Paxson getting the ball in those winning moments. Or winning moments when Magic Johnson had to pass it to, who, well, look at his options, Kareem, Worthy, Byron Scott, even. <laughs> or Larry Bird had to pass it. Oh, Mikhail took the last shot. I dare you, Mikhail. You got Dennis Johnson sitting there. You got Parrish sitting there. The point of it is, when you have these type of options, you have to take full advantage of it. Right now, we're talking about Anthony Davis, and Anthony Davis is a top five player in this world. Anthony Davis may be the best player on the Lakers this year. LeBron, feeling snubbed about his MVP, may not even be the team MVP. So I want to put some focus on Anthony Davis and show you guys how clutch he is. Full screen king time and show you this clutch gene right here. Highest field goal percentage on shots to tie or take the lead in the final 24 seconds. Last possession of fourth quarter or overtime. Whoa! I see Anthony Davis's name second on this list. So when you know this, when you know the metrics, you know the analytics, you know your teammates, you know your personnel, yeah, a play designed for LeBron doesn't mean you have to do it with all intents and purposes. You can practically go out there and shoot it with a guy who's this clutch in Anthony Davis. Give him his cred, y'all. Oh, where to begin? <laughs> look, it's a, it's a bad look that my MVP and the most experienced player in this, in this series was a non-factor and a spectator on the last play of the game. I agree with you, Marcellus, in the examples that you gave. But you have to be a factor. He never even raised his hand or made a move. He's a decoy. And I would give him an out if he was looking in the direction of AD and said, you know what, I was supposed to set a screen or this play was supposed to be for me, but AD's coming off wide open. I don't want to mess that up. But if you watch the play, he doesn't know what's going on with AD. He has no idea that he's coming open. So the idea that LeBron doesn't take the shot, okay, I'll give it to you. But be a factor. Be at least a decoy. Now, the other side of this is, considering how the final five minutes went, I don't know that it's necessarily a bad decision on LeBron James's part because he was so bad up until that last 2.1 seconds. Last five minutes, I counted three turnovers, two missed shots, and one air ball three. 
If he wasn't feeling like he wanted to take that last shot, I understand it. But that ultimately comes with the territory. So at least do something. The fact that he never even raised his hand, he never made a move, he didn't go to set a screen, which is, I've had conversations all morning with people in the NBA about what were the Lakers trying to accomplish? Why was Anthony Davis saying this was a play for LeBron James? Was it because LeBron and Rajon changed the play after they came out of the timeout? Or did LeBron just decide, you know what? This ain't for me. I'm going to let AD take it. But I would want LeBron James in these situations to be at least acting like he wants the ball. And I didn't <laughs> see any of that on this play. Man, all my notes <clears throat> have me agreeing with Marcellus. Good but note. this isn't an agree with Marcellus type of day. <laughs> so I'm really going to go ahead and kind of straddle the fence a little bit, Marcellus, right, although that is a pivotal sin on television, and sports television specifically. Mm -hmm. Here's my issue. To Slick Rick, I do agree with the point of LeBron didn't even call for the ball. Like, he didn't even try to go get the ball. That is my pivotal problem with LeBron James. The, we have to remember the debates. At least the barbershop debates are this. LeBron James, is he truly clutch? Is LeBron truly the winner in winning moments? My issue with LeBron is the best shot for LeBron isn't the shot that LeBron takes. The best shot is whoever actually has the best shot on the court. Whereas you look at the greats in any sport, the best shot for them is the shot that they take. At least that's what you would, that's what Jordan would have said. That's what Jordan, in fact, does say. However, hmm. because they hit the shot, now I'm with Marcellus. Because the fact of the matter is this. LeBron, he knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses, Slick. So I can't be mad if LeBron does understand in that moment, you know what? I've gone cold. AD has scored our last 10. Let's trust the hot hand. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to be a decoy. If nothing else, it speaks to LeBron's greatness in that a Plumlee, who has no reason not to run around, it wasn't even a screen. He has no reason to try to switch except for the fact that LeBron James is LeBron James. So I'm torn on this one. Should LeBron have called for the ball, at least tried to go get the ball? Absolutely. But at the same time, LeBron has the wherewithal. LeBron has the common sense. LeBron has the humility to realize, you know what? I gone cold. The objective here is to win the game. I'm 22 and 0 when I take 2 and 2 0 series leads. I realize if we do win this game, this series is all but over. He made the right decision, so I'm not going to slight him for that one, Slick. Yeah, you, look, look, stop. Stop with this lazy argument about the barbershop is the high IQ moment, which we dictate all sports arguments. I understand we have them in the barbershop, but there is a time where you can get up and say, hey, dog, I know you didn't finish this cup, but I got to go. This is ignorant what we're talking about right here. <laughs> like, we're like, look, Jordan passed a ton in clutch moments, but still at the barbershop, they still talking to while they cutting you up. I ain't trying to hear it. That's why I don't go to barbershops. Here's the thing. <laughs> LeBron was cooking in the first quarter while AD was chilling. LeBron had 12 of his 26 in the first quarter. AD had 12 of his 31 in the fourth quarter. To Slick Rick's point. But then you get down to this last possession where Caruso shot a three that went under the rim. I ain't never seen, like, Caruso, hey, bro, you ain't ready for this <laughs> moment just yet. You're nice, but you ain't ready for this yet. And then you get a situation where Plumlee gets glued to LeBron, goes under the screen. You know why? Because it's LeBron. Sometimes you ain't got to try to do it all. LeBron's presence, you ever seen that before? In football, we know we do this a lot. We ask a quarterback just to go out there in the Wildcat just to take up a defender. What you going to do on the play, coach? Nothing. <laughs> just be out here is enough for us. LeBron's presence on the court was enough to have the impact that allowed AD to make that three-pointer with a late closeout by Jokic. But the point of it is, let's not take a slight at LeBron. Like, we never should have took a slight at all the other greats who have benefited from this moment from having other great players around them. And last time I checked, some of those guys didn't even have top five players in the world around them. AD's clutch, he's top five. He should have been able to take the shot and make it like he did. Marcellus, here's the great distinction. I'm not going to give Mason Plumley the out that because it was LeBron James, <laughs> he immediately ran to him like a magnet because LeBron James wasn't providing any fear in that situation. That's my issue. Do something that makes me what think you're a threat. Man. If you LeBron don't put your hand up, fear slip. Thank LeBron, you. Always for, LeBron always provides sleer, fears. Like, if I'm walking through a park and I hear rot, rot, Rottweiler barking, I don't need to know the history of that rot. <laughs> I know it's a rot. It's okay, a I'm rotter. scared. Mm. So I don't need to know if that rot has a, has a criminal record or not <laughs> you know, amongst dogs. <laughs> I know he's a dog. Might be, that might be for you. 
But I'm telling you that <laughs> NBA <laughs> teams looking at this situation, if LeBron's not on the move, they're not at nearly as worried about him in a half-court set. And this situation where Jeremy, look, they set it up. They put Mason Plumley in, essentially, so that they could prevent LeBron from making the slip to the basket. The idea was he's going to set a screen. Now the, he's going to end up having a, potentially a smaller guy on him, and he's able to cut to the basket and then get the shot. If he recognized that Plumlee's on the floor and now it's big on big, so that play doesn't work, I'm all good with that. But you still have to act like a decoy. The, all these comparisons to Jordan not taking the last second play. Mm. But we saw in every one of those huddles, we've got it. We've got it on tape. Him going, Steve Kerr, be ready. Because you know what? Because I'm going to look for my shot, and if it's not there, I know that I'm going to pass to you. Those were designed plays. Now, if this was a design play from the start for AD to take it, I still want LeBron pretending like he's trying to draw some attention. Oh, by the way, can I get that AD full screen back? Can you? Can, uh -oh. the, the one with no, the No, we got to go to commercial jeans. break right now. Can I yeah, see I did, that? I did hear we, we late. <laughs> can you? Can you? Can, huh? can we? Can we look at the oh, other Marcellus, names I told you not on to run that full list? Screen, Marcellus. Wait, what's wrong? Can I told we look you not at Al Horford as? And now he got us. Gene? Now he got us. Mark. No, he doesn't got it. What shot has he made? How Gasol? It's right what there. What game winner has? I'm I'm sorry. Like this, you, this needs this, context. This, this L? This I assume these were mind. regular season games against the Charlotte Hornets, or I, I don't know who they <laughs> were against. All, all it shows to me, Slickwick, is that perception is not reality. And a lot of times at the barbershop, oh, dog, oh, dog. Uh, it, look, as great as Kobe is and was, rest in peace, Kobe, Pau Gasol's right there. You know why? Because even Kobe, Mamba mentality had to, hey, pal, help me out a couple times. Jordan. We need, no, no, Kurt, we, we need to do another show. Okay, well, that, we can do it, man. I'm just saying perception blasphemy. is not reality. Yeah. Respect that. Here's what is reality, Marcellus. You said something earlier, and of all of this, the only thing that's important, if you're in the middle of a haircut, I don't care how ignorant the statement is, do not get up. Oh, I'm out. Make sure he finishes that cut. <laughs> I can't okay. hear this image. <laughs> Coming up in our me. big story, <laughs> the Cowboys had a comeback win for the ages, but Mike McCarthy made some questionable choices. I'm going to tell you exactly why that Cowboys job is way too big for him. Go. That's next. Speak for you. You're watching. Speak for yourself. Marcel Swally, bruised, battered, but still but in the still building. here. Are you still here throwing these punches? <laughs> <laughs> My little bro, man, you're watching, boy. Woo. He be over here hey, flexing. Hands heavy, though. Hands I heavy. love it. I feel it. Oh, it's time for our big story presented by Hyundai. Let's head back to Dallas where they felt it yesterday. The Cowboys had a huge comeback win over the Falcons led by Dak Prescott's two touchdowns late in the fourth quarter. Dallas recovered an onside kick and hit the game-winning field goal a few plays later. The win was huge, but Mike McCarthy is still getting criticized. One of the reasons? He went for a two-point conversion that failed when Dallas was down by nine instead of picking the extra point. Ooh, take a listen to McCarthy on the comeback. We dug ourselves such a big hole there in the first in the first quarter and um you know I, I just think the way the guys rallied and just kept just kept going I, you know especially young and you know it's a young season uh we're we're you know we're early in the in the process of our football team finding out about each other each and every day so it, this is just a this is a big chunk of confidence that we'll, we'll carry forward so very proud of the team very proud of everybody um i can't just say enough about the way our, way our players just kept fighting so I told us the Cowboys job look too big for big Mike McCarthy. It looks way too big, man. It looks, let's be honest again, you cannot let this win mask the deficiencies that occurred yesterday. Mm -hmm. The only way the Cowboys will get better and achieve their goals that they really want to attain, which is Super Bowl or at least an NFC championship game, yeah. is if they're their own biggest critic. Marcellus, you know this better than I do. Every Monday after your NFL Sunday games, you go back and you watch the tape. Yeah. And you self-scout. Mm. And it's time for the Cowboys to self-scout and be very introspective. Mike McCarthy, you said uh, we battled back after we put ourselves in a hole. You put the Cowboys in a hole more than anybody. I understand the Cowboys fumble. Mm. I understand interceptions. I understand all that. Mm. Mike McCarthy, it's 14-0. to It's six minutes left in the first quarter. And you run a fake punt at your own 29-yard line. Now, Marcellus, here's what fans will say. Well, Acho, it was user error. The play was open. The players didn't complete it. Complete it. Yeah. It was a punter 
throwing the football. Throw Duh, it. that happens. Yeah, I don't yeah. care if he can throw. He's in the league for kicking. Yeah. He's in the league for his legs, and you're asking him to throw the ball. Mike McCarthy, you have to factor that into the equation. You run a fake punt on fourth and five when it is a 12-point game, and y'all, to a degree, have several mo a lot of the momentum, and you run a fake punt at your own 40. You are asking to lose. Mike McCarthy, this is not Madden, sir. I'm sorry because <laughs> although year. Cowboys fans think I don't like them, I grew up on Cowboys fans. Okay. But, like, nothing will bring me more pleasure outside of the Eagles going to the Super Bowl than uh, the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. Right. I'll be real. Plus, it makes for great television. Good. So I want the Cowboys to succeed. But I'm watching this game, and I'm like, Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys are having to win in spite of your nonsensical decision-making. But here's why I'm so passionate about this. If Dak Prescott throws no touchdowns and five picks yesterday, but the Cowboys' defense has three pick sixes and somehow the Cowboys still win 21 mm. to 19, we would be crushing Dak. Mm. Mike McCarthy would also be crushing Dak. So don't sit here now, Mike McCarthy, and try to bob and weave in the presser and try to explain yourself out of ludicrous, ludicrous and ridiculous decisions that should never be made. If the Cowboys had lost that game yesterday, Mike McCarthy deserves more to blame than any player on that team. Oh, my goodness. Uh... <laughs> This is not too big for Mike McCarthy. Absolutely. Obviously, you've never met Mike McCarthy. Have or you haven't even become familiar with who he is in terms of his coaching resume. Don't forget who Mike McCarthy is. Uh, let's go back. Mike McCarthy. Oh, here it is. Took over a 4-12 and team. How did that turn out the next year? Won four more games, 8-8. Eight and eight. How did that turn out after that? NFC Championship game in his second season with Farr at his quarterback. Oh, he had to take over another team where he had a, a young star in the making and Aaron Rodgers. Oh, how did that team finish? Six and ten. How did they go to next year? Eleven and five. Oh my God, what happened? Then after that, they win the Super Bowl. Oh, Mike McCarthy knows how to respond. But that's just Mike McCarthy in terms of mental makeup and his resume. But let's apply that to this situation right here. Cause I give you that. Mike McCarthy may not be good at math and talking about, hey, we got to go for it. We ain't going to kick an extra point when we're down nine. We're going to go out there and try and go for two. Maybe not the best mathematician. But, boy, to now look at him and undermine his resume, undermine his mentality, and undermine what he can do, undermine what he can do for an organization, I think you've been a little too harsh. Here's the thing. If you've ever been around horse racing, have you ever been around horse racing, Emmanuel? I'll tell you I have not, sir. You have not? Okay. Well, you've heard this sports cliche that you got to have the horses. <laughs> and last time I checked, I know horses can't speak for themselves, but horses don't blame jockeys. You know why? Because it doesn't matter what you call in there. It's about the execution. Players Come on, bro. play. Players execute. Come on now. Mike McCarthy didn't fumble a damn ball you don't yesterday. Mean this, Marcellus. Mike McCarthy didn't go out there and miss a damn block yesterday. You don't mean more, this. Uh, I do mean this. That Mike McCarthy took a team that was down 39 points, that forced no turnovers. You know what the record? Mike McCarthy did that? Mike no, no. He took this team and kept them steady and led them to kept this them win. By running and, a fake field goal on fourth and five at the Oh, oh, you want to go there? I'm well, there. I'm well, there. I was already there. Okay. I'm there. I well, was born well, there. But at the I'm execution the of the dark. team, when they do good things, you got to give them credit, just like you're trying to take credit away when they don't Fair. succeed in those Fair. moments. Fair. What is the record of teams that has been down 39 points, a team that scored 39 points and forced no turnovers? What's that record they say? Oh, and 440. Zero wins and 440. But now the guy who gets the first win in, in NFL, AFL, and in football history is now the guy that Emmanuel Acho wants to say is not ready for this moment. Please let me hear you Marcellus, say something. Marcellus, you sense. know, uh, you know, you're smarter than this. Marcellus, the Falcons I lost didn't. that football game. There is that. a difference. The Cowboys get the W, the Falcons get the L. Mm -hmm. But just like there's a difference between a turnover and a takeaway, a takeaway, you took the ball. A turnover, they gave it That's to you. That's your story. No, 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 that is a fact. But that is fact. your story. The, Falcons, the ball is just gone either the, way you want to give Falcons it a story. The Falcons lost that game oh, more did. than the Cowboys won it. I'm not going to accredit Mike McCarthy <laughs> for that Cowboys win yesterday. You that should. would be a ludicrous thing to do, to sit here and say, the man who Marcellus, it would have been a one-possession game after the Cowboys scored. Did you score. even point. You were talking about the know. ifs. It would have. I didn't say if. I said it would have. It, it would have. Oh, okay. It, it, uh, uh, it would have been, it, it been a one-possession game, 39-31. This man decides to go for two. He ain't good at math. This man said, you know math what, Cowboys, problem. I don't even want to win. That's what he said. He said, I don't even want to win.
don't even want to win. I'm going to go for two to keep it at 39-30. So even if we score, we have to pray to the gods, the football gods, that some onside kick will go in our favor, and the Falcons would be too scared to recover it. Mm. Come on, Marcellus. You're, you're smarter than that. No, I, I am smart. I'm not smarter than that. I didn't go to Harvard. Went to Columbia. It's a different... <laughs> um, I always tell people that. He took Goliath's best punch. And I'm not talking about the team. I'm talking about the moment. You got to understand that when you're building a team, you have to build off of moments. Oh, I'm getting deep on you. So here, Goliath hit him with a 0 in 440 moment. <laughs> no coach, no team has ever come back in that situation. And he looked at Goliath and Ugh, ate that punch and said, what else do you have, brother? That's who he is. Now, let's talk about Dallas, because I think a lot of this is the hypercriticism that comes from Dallas. It's too big for him. Let me tell you what Dallas is, and it's mm -hmm. interesting. Playing for the Cowboys, not the JV team, you know, the college team you're on. When you're actually in the building, not as an employee like you, but you actually got the star <laughs> of it, you know what I'm talking about? It is a different environment in Correct. terms of criticism. Correct. And Absolutely. that criticism makes you self-correct pretty fast. Absolutely. It doesn't boil you. It doesn't take you to a place you've never been. It just makes you cognizant of everything around you to the point when you're in the NFL, any other place I play, Buffalo, Jacksonville, mm -hmm. San Diego, they hang on to every word because Absolutely. it's the NFL. In Dallas, they hang on to every syllable. But that doesn't take you out of your mind. It doesn't take you out of who you are. Because who Mike McCarthy is... Who is he? He is a guy who corrects the course. He had a 4-12 and 12 team. He had a 6-10 and 10 team. He took those teams to Super Bowls or NFC Championship mm -hmm. games. And now he's in that same position, starting that slow grind and climb. You probably don't want to give him his respect and credit. No, right I don't now. know. But the, the end product, you will have to respect. Here's what I respect. I respect that Mike McCarthy is 7-12-1 and one without Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. That is what I respect. Hey, this did, 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 did Mike McCarthy okay, take all these Packers this, there? This, all, all, these, all these Packers teams there? This. Or did two Hall of Fame quarterbacks okay. take the Packers there? We're Mike McCarthy is not a Hall of Famer, Marcellus. His quarterbacks are. Let's make no mistake about <laughs> it. Uh, if you want to give credit, give credits where it's due. Don't sit here and let Mike McCarthy oh. take ownership for things that Hall of Famer Brett Favre did and one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen in the game of football, Aaron Rodgers did. Because Mike McCarthy was also, what, 4-12 and 12 when he got fired, if I'm not mistaken? I'm off top of the head, so I could be incorrect. But then Matt LaFleur comes in, and the Packers instantly go to another NFC championship. So, Marcellus, was it really Mike McCarthy that made the Packers, or was it Aaron Rodgers? Because Aaron Rodgers is a constant. Wow. Mike McCarthy is a variable. And you know something, there's fixed factors, and there's variable factors. Mm. Mike McCarthy came and left. Aaron Rodgers still there. Packers are still good with or without Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy showed the pressure made him crack. Pressure makes diamonds, pressure bursts pipes. Mike McCarthy's pipe burst in the first quarter when he ran a fake down by 14 in the first quarter of week mm. two, Marcellus. This wasn't week 16. This wasn't like a, I must win this game on this play Ooh. right now. So you, you were doing a lot of sighing. I'm wondering if the sighing is going to lead to some logic. You just told me that Mike McCarthy's nothing without Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. His, his record Seven told you and that. 12 his and His record one. told you that. Se yeah, yeah. I just said his record. Yeah, his record. Yeah, mm -hmm. we ain't going to talk about the actor, just the act. Seven, 12, and one, right? Absolutely. God, that's a bad win percentage. I good. I wonder what 36 and 80 is for a coach without Tom Brady. Hmm. Uh, what organization? <laughs> what organization? <laughs> What organization? Wait what a minute. Bill, Bill Belichick, is he a Hall of Fame coach without what Tom Brady? What organization? You, you, which Belichick you, are you talking about? You are amazing at taking beautiful Here pictures. Here you go. And then you just go to the dollar store for your frame and just put it in any old frame. You got to keep perspective. I'm never going to take away your greatest attribute and say, how great are you? Your greatest attribute is what coaching. Great. Even when and now he has another even great Even when Brady left, Belichick still was 11 and 5 with yeah, Castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't sit here and tell me that system and to be compared against Belichick every coach is a failure <laughs> that's my oh, point no 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 so, well, then, then hold on because if you're going to try to use his system to say that's what it is it is but Mike McCarthy is building a different type of system it's not going to be called a patriot way he's building it off Cowboys ignorance system. is what I'm saying I'm but, not saying that he's not building it but what the funny thing is when people saw Mike McCarthy in 2006 mm -hmm. when they saw Mark McCarthy in 2008 they probably had the same slice as you but if you let it run its course it always ends in the Super Bowl championship or Tremendous. One, success. Of, yes, one of them. 
Come, 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 come on, please, please go to break. Go to break. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm counting Cam Newton points. was a yard away from a thrilling game winner and being better than Russell Wilson. We'll tell you if Cam is back to being Super Cam. Next, Speak for Yourself. Presented Welcome by back to Speak for Yourself. Friends. Let's talk about Cam Newton, who seems to be fitting in perfectly in New England. He threw for nearly 400 yards with three total touchdowns last night against the Seahawks. Cam had the Patriots on the brink of a comeback win, but was stopped at the goal line, feeling a win for Seattle. LeVar is back with us, although I'm not sure what he's going to say since he talked about Cam Newton in the A block. But, uh, <laughs> All his ammo. <laughs> Marcellus, I'm going to you first. Is Super Cam back despite the loss? Yes, Super Cam is back, as we saw in that celebration that he had in one of his touchdowns, one of his three touchdowns, that Cam Newton gave it up for Wakanda and for Super Cam being back. <laughs> Respect. Uh, you got to put this in context as well. Cam Newton, second game as a New England Patriot. New system, new head coach, new offense coordinator, new, new, new everywhere around, right? And then you don't even have your security blanket in your second outing because James White... Missed the game because of the his father passing. And you get a situation like that and you're Cam Newton, whew, a lot can go wrong for you, but a lot went right for Cam Newton. Went out there, Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman, uh, Super Bowl MVP. Julian Edelman, the same guy that some say is a Hall of Famer going for, had a career day. Julian Edelman had the most receiving yards he's had in his entire NFL career. In Cam Newton's second game. So let me just pass this baton to somebody who's going to be ignorant enough to tell me that Super Cam is not back. But from what I saw yesterday, one yard away from beating Russell Wilson, who nearly had a perfect game. Oh, yeah, Super Cam is in the building. Sir, I dare not utter a word saying Super Cam not to be back. Um, okay. I'm with you. Cam Newton is the one person who can bring Marcellus and I together on this show today. Super go. Cam is back. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's keep it 100 right now. So Cam Newton had the most passing yards he's had since his first two weeks of 2011. Woo. 2011 was his rookie season. This is his second game with the Patriots. Cam Newton had, what, 15 rushing attempts last week. That's the second most attempts, again, if I'm not mistaken, that Cam Newton's ever had in his career. Cam Newton has showed me this. If you want to run the ball and be dominant, oh, he can do that. If you want to pass the ball and do, be dominant, oh, he can do that as well. Remember, Cam Newton hasn't been with this offense, with this system, for more than four months. And Cam is already out here ba balling. The Seahawks right now look like the best team in the NFL. The Patriots went on the road to mm. Seattle. Fans or no fans, they still got to travel across the coast. To mm. Seattle and took them down to the wire. If the whole city had not been at the goal line trying to stop Cam Newton, he would have gone into the end zone. So Super Cam is, in, in, without a doubt, back. And I'm excited to see it because so many teams passed up on Cam Newton. So many teams said Cam Newton didn't have it. So many teams said uh, Cam Newton might just be a rental type of quarterback, one and done, a plug, a gap stopper. No, Cam Newton is back, and he's here to stay. Hmm, interesting. You know, shouts out to all my Tongan Nation people and my Polynesian people. You know, the beauty about when you go to a cookout with them, they cook the entire pig. You know, we like getting the ribs. We like getting the leg. But this Cam Newton topic has so much meat to it <laughs> that it kind of reminds me of going to one of those type of deals where, you know, wow. you can pick and choose where you want to get your meat from, and it's all good because it's been prepared a certain way and it had love connected to it, right? Mm -hmm. It was the B block, by the way, Mr. Acho. Yeah, like, we're right. starting <laughs> with him, looking at details <laughs> of, of things that are being said. I was not in the A block. I was in the B block when I shot off my <laughs> ammunition about uh, Mr. Cam Newton. But here's the thing. There's so much meat on that bone that I can go to this. Mm. In the biggest moment of Cam Newton's career, which, by the way, yes, not only is Super Cam back and has shown that Super Cam is back, but he's Super Cam Wakanda forever back right now. <laughs> he may be better than the Cam that we saw in North Carolina. And I'm just looking at what we saw last night against one of the premier teams in the National Football League. And with... 80 yards to go. Cam marches them down in a one-minute drill, not a two-minute mm. drill. It's a one-minute drill. Takes them all the way down to a situation where destiny was staring him and this New England Patriots new-look team in the face. They came up short. But what I will say is when I watched Cam, here were the questions that I was very, very adamant about before we saw him become the starter of this team, before we saw him in a game, was 
Can he stay healthy? Can he adjust and adapt to the system that Bill Belichick mm -hmm. and, and McDaniel and those guys are going to put in front of him? Can he be a leader? Can he fit in? Those were my four main things mm -hmm. that I'm looking at in Cam. He showed us that in week one, but it was against the team that we were like, okay, Miami, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there yet. But against Seattle, we saw leadership. We saw poise. We saw composure. And we saw execution. And he did not fail or disappear and duck in one of the biggest moments of the season so far. So he's absolutely back. Yeah, look, I I'm going to give you guys an example in my real life that this shows me what Cam is going through right now. And it's an interesting example, a little lighthearted. This Patriot system, it's a Tesla. And let me give it to you guys. And you brought it up, LeVar. All of the issues or concerns or question marks we have with Cam Newton were about the intangibles, not the tangibles, because he has talent mm -hmm. in droves. Like, he's just, have y'all ever met Cam Newton? People out there watching, some of y'all have seen him, autograph seekers, whatever the hell. Ugh. He makes athletes be like, yo, I don't know what he did. <laughs> I don't know what line he stood in, but goodness, he got back in the line for a healthy scoop of his talent level. But the intangibles, the buy-in, the trust, that was the conversation, and we all know that usually takes time. Oh, not mm -hmm. with Cam Newton. Now, let's talk about this Tesla, because Tesla is known for being an amazing vehicle, but I can tell you the best feature it has is this self-driving capability. Mm. I literally prepare some of my notes while I'm on the freeway. I ain't got to pay attention. I don't have to do jack. Like, it's driving me to work. And I'm not saying this to brag, because anybody with any level of finances, if you can get a Tesla, get a Tesla. It's a humble brag. It's a humble brag. It's <laughs> you all right, me. though. It's I flex right. a little bit. Here's right. the thing. It's OK. But, but the self-driving doesn't work as soon as you take it off the lot. You know why? The sensors have to calibrate. They have to know your world, and they want to know your driving capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So there's just intelligence and communication going back and forth. And those sens sensors must configure. But then all of a sudden, you get a boo, mm -hmm. and it tells you, we're ready. Now, once it's ready, the system's ready, do you trust it as the driver? I ain't gonna lie, it took oh, me weeks. That's the biggest, it that's took the me biggest weeks. piece of I, it. I'm no, like, talk I, to him, Mark Sally. I know the stats talk to him. But I'm on the freeway like, oh, hell no, I ain't doing no work. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 10 to 2, like the police behind me. I'm 10 to 2. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, finally, you get to a point. You're like, you know what? It is working. Every time the sensors go off, it tells me exactly what I need to know. But then, what happens? What happens? My wife, who also has a Tesla, gets in my car I while money. I'm driving. Here we go. Two Guess Teslas? what? Two Teslas. Three, actually. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's my wife. Here she goes every time she sees a car. Oh, baby, you're not paying attention. Baby, it's driving this. Oh, oh, baby, you have one. She <laughs> needs to trust me that needs to trust the system. The teammates still got to buy into you, Cam, yeah. as they oh, buy wow. into the system. You went there. That's and deep. guess That's what, y'all? It on, takes Sellers. time. Come on. But it usually it's gonna take just two weeks for Cam to hey, be <laughs> It's a match hey, made in heaven. Man. Come on. <laughs> this Eagles aren't panicking despite being 0-2. Wow. Well, we'll tell you if it's time to press that panic button. Preach, preacher. Next, speak for yourself. The church says. That's good. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Let's head to Philly. I chose old spot where the Eagles are 0-2 after losing to the Rams. Carson Wentz had two more interceptions. Relax. And now leads the league with five giveaways. Ooh. Despite the turnovers, Wentz still seems optimistic about the season. Listen to this. Mm. Turning the ball over is really killing us the last two weeks. Those are things we know we can clean up. But other than that, uh, we truly feel that we're right there. We're just missing some things, timing of some things. We're not panicking. The sky's not falling. Um, there's some good things that we're doing, and, and we'll get back on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Otto, I got to know, is it panic time for him? Carson Wentz is My Eagles. first lap, I'm going to tell you how it's not. And I'm going to tell you why it's not. In your eagle suit. Okay, yes, yes, <laughs> First this. off, this is an eagle's green. Think about it, Marcellus. Mm -hmm. The New York Giants were already bad, but they lost their star running back. Uh, unfortunately, Saquon yeah. Barkley out for the season. Tough. The Dallas Cowboys aren't looking very good. They're average, but good for them. They just got to win. They're sitting at one and one. The Washington football team, again, not looking very good. Did beat the Eagles week one, but just got 
uh, a pretty embarrassing loss yesterday to the Cardinals. So the Eagles are only one game back after two games. Oh, you right? doing this? <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm doing this. You've been on a lot of losing teams. <laughs> Boy, they cook the books like this every time no, you lose. But listen, <laughs> what? The, the NFC East oh, is God. truly the NFC least. It is. Like, the NFC really East is, really is terrible. Yes, I yes. think the winner of that yes. division is probably going to win with nine games. Yes. Ten at the absolute most. But realistically yes. speaking, Giants aren't getting The Giants might not as well not even be in the division this year. It's just not going to go well for mm. them. The Washington football team, they might get to eight. So it's going to be the Cowboys getting to like nine or ten. Mm. So for that reason, the Eagles don't need to be concerned just yet. Oh, godly boy, you are hopping over here. Just yet. Hopping, jopping, stopping okay. like a rabbit. There are eight words in this question, and three of them say Carson wins his Eagles. And you decide not to talk about those, but take it to a grander conversation at NFC East. Boy, you ain't slick. You forgot who you're working with. <laughs> oh, Carson Wentz. To avoid being called a Carson Wentz hater, which seems to start to pick up steam on my timeline, or a Philadelphia Eagles hater, I just want you guys to listen to this sound of the game yesterday. <laughs> game where that's not the crowd booing. That is the sound being piped into the stadium booing because they know the crowd ain't there, but if they were, they would be booing as well. That lets you know it's panic time in Philadelphia, big dog. Take it from me. You always say I got humble brags and I like the flex, but I also raise my hand when it's time to say I know how it feels to fall off in the NFL. Let me give you the warning signs of when you've fallen off in the NFL. The first one is, I told you, rotation. Hey, Wiley, you need a spell. Wiley, you need a breather. Wiley, we're going to just put your back up in for a couple of moments. Nothing critical, nothing of huge importance, just to see it. Did we see a Jalen Hurst package yesterday? We didn't, we saw Did, we see, did they break the seal on? Because <laughs> they can't be fully seen in them streets on Hurst Boulevard. But they, uh, <laughs> trust me, and hey, is that coach on Hurst Boulevard? Let me tell you another thing that happens when you're falling off, especially when the catalyst is injury. And for him, it's been the narrative of injury. Every time he's playing great, oh, can't finish the deal. It mentally fries you because now you're competing against yourself. Mentally, you're like, my body's brittle. This game is fickle. So you try to outplay the circumstances. You try too hard. You do more. You don't work smarter. You work harder. And then what happens with Carson Wentz every time he tries that? He makes bad plays, makes mistakes, interceptions. There's no way out of this, big dog. This is like the movie Saw. No matter where you go, <laughs> you got hell to pay. I'm telling you, what he needs right now is to be sat down a week or two. Mm -hmm. Let Jalen Hurts come in there and fix this situation because his effort is just going to lead him into a worse situation. And nothing is going to work until he has time to sit back, collect himself, and then go back out there okay. and try and hit the ground. Wentz running. doesn't need to be sat oh, down, no, but, time, but I, will, I will admit this. Okay, I'm going to give you something. It is panic time. Oh, we co you coming on? You're coming well, here, over here. Here's why it's panic time. He, he it's panic time. time because we haven't seen Carson Wentz do this since his rookie season. Mm -hmm. Okay, Acho, what is this? We haven't seen Carson Wentz have two bad games in a row. Last year, 2019, True. Carson Wentz had a two-interception game. Then, like I told you, he rattled off 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. He had... Two interception game again. Then he rattled off 10 touchdowns, one interception. The year before, 2018, he only had one two interception game all season, the whole season while he was healthy. Year before that, 2017, he didn't have any two interception games. So we haven't even seen this Carson Wentz. That's not good. He's not trending good at all. the wrong way. He's trending way. the wrong way. He's trying to do too much. That is why it is, that's why it is panic time for the Eagles. Yes. But Carson Wentz has taken away. Carson Wentz can also give. If you put Carson Wentz on the bench, I think that's the worst thing to do because now all of a sudden you got a quarterback controversy. You need a mini red shirt, bro. Two, two games. Red shirt is mine. He's mentally fried. He's talking about it was just a couple plays that got away. It just, it's a game of inches. Everything that gets away turns into either greatness or disaster. But, but you would never say bench Aaron Rodgers. You would never say bench Deshaun Watson. You know why I wouldn't say You would never say, say bench uh, uh, Russell Wilson. You're you would never say bench Matthew Stafford even. You, know you wouldn't what? even say bench Matt Ryan, Marcellus, if they had two bad games in a you know, row. So it, I think it, that's a little ludicrous. It's that's a little ludicrous because we came into her already with concerns about you even finishing the deal. Now you can't even play well in the deal. And that's why we drafted at your position in the second round. Here's, a, here's an interesting stat line before we go. 
Wentz is the eighth quarterback since 2010 to start a season. Two losses, five or more giveaways, under 60% completion percentage. You want to hear these names? Deshaun Kaiser, Andy Dalton, Christian Ponder, Matt Castle, Brett Favre, Matt Moore, and Andrew Luck. Brett Favre. Andrew Luck. There's some good stuff in there, except that's when they're all going down the hill. Carson, pump them brakes. You might be going down the hill. Coming up, several big names went on the injury list Sunday. We'll break down a wild weekend in the NFL. Next, speak for yourself. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. The NFL added several big names to the injury list Sunday. Saquon Barkley, he tore his ACL and will have season-ending surgery. Christian McCaffrey will reportedly be out four to six weeks with an ankle injury, while the 49ers had multiple injuries, including reigning defensive rookie of the year, Nick Bosa, who is likely out for the year with a torn ACL himself. But take a look at the injured names mm. on the list. Jimmy G suffered Whoa. a high ankle sprain Sunday. Devontae Adams, hamstring injury. Uh, and Broncos receiver Cortland Sutton, he's out with a torn ACL as well. Mm. All devastating mm. on a day of otherwise really good football. Tragic yeah. news for so many of these athletes. So, Marcellus, what's your reaction to the week two Ooh. injuries? That day and put your name on there, Emmanuel Acho, bad takes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All beat up, <laughs> out for the... How long are you going to be out? <laughs> <laughs> I need you tomorrow. All right, here's the real. Uh, I begrudgingly reverse course and say we need training camp, big dog, mm. in a different way. Not the, the, the pseudo training camp that's been going on in the NFL the last few years because of player safety, and certainly not the compromised version of the pseudo training camp light that we've had the last few years because of the pandemic. You need something that stresses these athletes before it's time to be stressed. I remember sitting in the Player Association meetings in Hawaii, 1999, and Dr. Him. I don't know his name, so I call him Dr. Him. <laughs> Dr. Him got up there and told all of us that the way that we approached the offseason was incorrect. Heating ourselves up, cooling off, and then heating yourself up again within 24 hours is just one of the stressors that causes injury, even in the process of conditioning. So in layman's terms, that basically means y'all putting a lot on your bodies in such a short workspace, short, uh, short amount of time, that you guys are not going to recover. Therefore, what happens usually in typical years? Mm -hmm. Most injuries happen in training camp. This year, not really the same type of training camp, so those injuries, because of trade-offs, have to happen somewhere. So it didn't happen in week one. You know why it didn't happen in week one? Because that was the initial stress. It's the response to the stress is what weakens the athletes that Dr. Him talked about 20-some years ago. What I saw in week two were guys that weren't fully prepared and conditioned for those moments. Even if you get through and skate by in week one, your body's like, chill out. We got to do this again, and we're not prepared. We saw the results. Yeah, I think there's one thing I remember from uh, my, major, my, ma my majoring in kinesiology. All right. Volume and intensity don't hurt people. Volume and intensity too quickly yes. hurt people. There and the problem is the volume plus the intensity of the NFL game is happening so fast. You can't simulate an NFL game. It doesn't matter how you practice how you it. Play. It doesn't matter how you OTA it all season team activities. It doesn't matter about voluntary workouts without pads. None of that matters. <laughs> you cannot simulate an NFL game where it's mano e mano. He got mouths to feed. I got mouths to feed. Let's do this. Let's dance full speed. The other thing you have to remember is it's not X acceleration that hurts people. It's the deceleration. Deceler, and athletes, back. they practice acceleration. They practice, let me speed up, let me speed up, let me change direction. But how well can you, 4-4 four, four running athlete, slow your body down? And that's the mm. problem. The NFL is going to have to consider the risk-reward with some of these high-profile players getting injured. Saquon Barkley, Bosa, Jimmy G with an ankle sprain, Bruce Irvin I just saw, Cortland Sutton. You're talking about some high-profile guys across the league, Marcellus. I remember, though, that you, you, because you can't simulate this, there's going to have to be a way to figure it out. I don't know what that way is, mm. but you can't afford to lose players like these to these ACL type of injuries. Yeah, let me be real, too. I'm a former player. Uh, it seems like, and I'm not saying the names on this list, somebody out there was committing the ultimate sin in the offseason. Hotel workouts, we call them. Hotel room workouts are pretty bad. You ever go into the hotel workout facility? Damn, these dumbbells only go up to 60 pounds. Hey, remember, this offseason, you couldn't go into the facilities. That's where you have the resources. That's where you have the technology. That's where you have the equipment that can stress an NFL player. You go into your own. Hey, you're left on your own this year, your local gym. Hey, the treadmill only goes 10 miles an hour with vinyl, not rubber. Hey, these dumbbells don't go up to 60 pounds. 
<sighs> you get into the real world where people got to eat, you can see the stress and how the consequences occur. Coming up, we're starting the week off with Uncle Jimmy giving the show a letter grade. You don't want to miss this next. Speak for yourself. Before we go, let's bring in our family. Uncle Jimmy, what letter grade would you give today's show, Uncle Jimmy? Uh, I, I don't know, man. Seriously. Because what? I just realized today that there's a plethora of reasons why Wally don't like you, Ocho. What happened, huh? I mean, despite the fact that you're just good-looking, intelligent, and incredibly outspoken, come to find out today this man got a problem with you because you're the same age as his daughter. <laughs> and to add insult to injury, his daughter follows you on Twitter and don't follow him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, this man has to come in here every day and hear you talk to him just like you, his daughter. Saying things like, ooh, you so old, oh, you ain't nut. <laughs> you disrespected him last week and spoke to him in your native tongue. What did you call him? Crazy ass goat. <laughs> Listen, man, I got to defend Marcellus, man. If you so damn smart, Ocho, let me hear you say the word asterisk, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come on, let me hear you yeah, say it. Asterisk. My daughter ain't picking asterisk. up either. Uh, we got to get to the bottom.